Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about medieval times. This is going to be an English lesson about um something that happened a long time ago but also I'm going to talk about the world of fantasy. So, we're gonna talk about medieval times, the middle ages. We're going to talk about uh history a little bit but at the same time, I'm going to be talking about the world of fantasy and I'll explain both of those in just a minute. Um If you are new here, uh this is a lesson that I do each week. I do this live on a Friday morning and I do re-release it later as a shorter version. So, you might be watching that one as well. Either way, welcome to this English lesson about medieval times. Whether you're watching this live or whether you're watching the shorter edited version, it's good to have you here. So, primarily, when I talk about medieval times, when we use the word medieval, I think about the middle ages. And I should mention that this lesson is going to be very European, I guess, in flavor. So, this is going to be a lesson where I'm going to be talking about the middle ages in Europe a bit but some of this will apply to other parts of the world. The middle ages took place from somewhere around 500 AD to 1400 AD, let's say. I think it had three different parts to it but it was a time when you saw the beginning of kings and you saw kingdoms and you saw people working fields so that they could support the kingdom or the king. So, the middle ages was an interesting time in the history of the world. Um it was the uh the time where either you had it made because you were part of the royalty or you were just out in a field uh farming and giving some of your stuff to the king. I think my family would have been the family out in the field farming. Uh when I do research on my family, they are farmers all the way back as far as you can go. So, anyways, the middle ages. I'm also going to be talking about fantasy. So, fantasy is a genre. You can read fantasy books. You can watch fantasy TV shows. And the reason I'm doing this lesson, there is a method to my madness I mentioned earlier is because there are new TV series coming out. I think there's one called the House of the Dragon or House of Dragon and there's the Lord of the Rings, uh the Rings of Power TV show. These are TV shows that are considered fantasy TV shows. So, they take place in a world where there are going to be things like knights and armor and swords similar to what you would find in the Middle Ages. So, Two reasons to do this lesson, a bit of a history lesson ish and also uh talking a little bit about the world of fantasy. Let's start with some of the things you would see. So, a castle is a large building. Uh a castle is something that a king or queen would build and they would live there. They would work there, I guess if you consider the fact that they I guess they would hold court in the castle as well. But this is where the king and queen would live. It would be heavily guarded um and it would be a secure location. Um usually made out of stone so that it was impenetrable. So, it was very hard for their enemies to attack. The castle might have towers on the corners. If we go back, you can see this tower this castle has some towers. A tower is a a tall structure. Um and the good thing about a tower is that when you stand on top, it allows you to see really far away and it also allows you to defend the castle better. So, when you have a tower, it kind of serves a few purposes. If you are on top, you can see the enemy coming and if you are on top, it's easier to attack the enemy if they attack your castle. And then below the castle somewhere, there might be a dungeon. This is similar to what today we would call a prison or a jail. Uh in the dungeon is where you would put um perhaps your enemies or someone who has done something bad in the kingdom, someone who you need to um punish in some way. You would put them in the dungeon. I think that uh medieval dungeons were probably horrible, horrible places. Um not very much light not very sanitary, not very clean. Probably a horrible place to be. Castles sometimes will have a drawbridge. Uh, A drawbridge is something you can walk across or ride a horse across but it also can be uh raised and lowered. So, you can raise the drawbridge to better protect your castle and you can lower the drawbridge in order to let friendly people come in or in order for you to be able to go out. 
So, a castle might have a drawbridge and you need a drawbridge if you have a moat. So, a moat is water that surrounds a castle. So, when you have a castle and you want to defend it, an easy way to defend it is to create a moat of water because then people can't come right up to the walls. They can't ride their horses up to the walls. There is a moat of water that prevents you. So, but if you have a moat, you either need to have a bridge across the moat like this castle does or you need to have a drawbridge which can be raised and lowered. Let's talk a little bit about people. A king of course is obviously a man who rules over a kingdom who rules over people. Uh, a king will wear a crown. A king will live in a castle and usually in most places you become king by simply being the oldest son of a king. So, it's something that we would consider hereditary. You know, he became a king because his dad was a king. Um and then obviously, uh in order for there to be children, there needs to be a queen. So, sometimes you have a king and queen who together have a child and that child becomes the next king or the next queen sometimes. If there are no male heirs in some uh royal families the uh the daughter will become the queen the next queen it depends on the rules i think i think there's different rules for royalty and then of course they rule over a kingdom a kingdom is what we call the area that a king or queen rules over they are essentially in charge of this area they own this area uh in their kingdom they will have people who live and work in their kingdom who would be considered their subjects. The subjects would be all the people that live there that the king or queen rule over. And of course, the king or queen will probably sit on a throne. That throne will most likely be in a throne room. So, a throne is a really nice chair essentially that a king or queen will sit in when they're meeting with people, when they're holding court as they rule over their kingdom, they will probably sit in the throne every day and they will have people come who need to ask them questions or beg for something or ask for something and they will sit in their throne and that throne would be in the throne room which is a very ornate room in a castle. Ornate means that it's very fancy. There's lots of gold. There's lots of silver. There's lots of um when you look at this picture, you can see that it's just very, very fancy. There's a very nice chandelier hanging from the ceiling and really nice uh, things to sit on made with luxurious fabrics. So, a throne room is where the throne is and it's usually uh, a very ornate room. And then, of course, we have the son of a king is called a prince. The daughter of a king and queen is called a princess. We have modern day kingdoms right now where there are princes and princesses as of course um but in medieval times and if you read fantasy books, there's often uh, a prince or a princess. Sometimes the princess needs to be saved if it's an older style story but they are the children of the king and queen. So, during that time as well, you would have noblemen or noblewomen. So, a nobleman was someone who was just below the king and queen. You also might call them lords and ladies. So, there were different levels of society. At the bottom, you had the very poor farmers or peasants. At the top, you had the king and just below the king, you would have noblemen and you would have noblewomen. Um I probably should have pluralized this like M-E-N. So, uh please do that in your mind. I'm saying nobleman um as plural. So, hopefully, that's not too confusing. I'll focus more on lords and ladies. So, you have the king and queen and just below the king and queen, you have lords and ladies. People who were very wealthy, people who were rich, people who the king and queen probably really like um but possibly not um but definitely the level of society just under the king and queen. So, we also have knights. So, a knight was someone who fought for the king. A knight is someone who if you're watching a fantasy show is probably one of the main characters. They're usually big strong men. They're usually from the part of society where the lords and ladies come from. 
Um, so they're usually um, either a lord or lady themselves, or they're from a family that's in that part of society. And their job was to fight for the king. So they would have a horse, they would have armor, they would have a sword, uh, and they would go into battle. When you watch um, a TV show, a fantasy TV show, or read a fantasy novel, you are most likely going to see a lot of knights um, if, uh, if, if that's what you are reading or watching. And then we have what's called a squire. A squire is usually a young boy who helps a knight. The squire might keep the armor fixed. The squire might polish the armor. The squire will help the knight get dressed in his armor when he goes into battle. Uh, so, a squire is usually a young boy who wants to be a knight and spends their time helping an actual knight um, do the things that they do. In the court of the king, in the throne room or perhaps in the banquet hall, you might see a jester. A jester is someone who acts funny or sings funny songs or tells jokes. The jester is there to entertain the king and queen and all of their guests that they have for dinner. So, a jester uh, might sometimes be called a court jester as well. And you might have what's called a bard. Uh, back in these times or if you're watching a fantasy TV show, there might be a bard. Uh, I think if you watched The Witcher, there was a bard in The Witcher who would sing a song, throw, throw a penny. To, I forget. I don't know what the song is. But a bard is someone who plays a lute. This is probably a lute or a guitar or some type of old stringed instrument and they make up songs and sing songs. So, a bard would be in our era, we would call them rock stars but in this era, they would be called a bard. So, the poorer people in the kingdom would be called peasants or serfs. They would not own the land that they lived on but they were given permission by the king or queen to farm the land and they had to give a portion of their crops to the king in taxes. So, a peasant or serf was very, very poor uh, and they lived in probably a small hut or a small house out in the countryside and they would take care of animals and they would farm the land and they would give uh, some of their produce to the king or queen in taxes. Probably wasn't a very, very nice life. It was probably very hard that life. And then you, of course, might have bandits. So, um, whenever I'm reading a fantasy novel or watching a fantasy TV show and when two people are riding out in the wilderness, traveling from one city to another, you can almost predict that bandits are going to try and rob them. That that's going to be part of the story. Bandits are of course, people who try to steal things from people. Uh, they are thieves. You could use the word thieves as well. They live out in the woods or they live out in the wilderness and then when you um, are going on a trip in olden days or when you are watching a show where someone goes on a trip, there's always a chance that bandits are going to try and rob them. Armor. So, armor is something that a knight would wear in order to protect themselves. So, a knight would have a suit of armor. I use the American spelling here by the way. In Canada, we often put a U in it but armor. A suit of armor was meant to protect the knight. It was very, very heavy but it also protected the knight in battle. It could stop arrows. It could stop swords. There would be spots in the armor though where um, the knight was unprotected. So, they would try to make sure because in order to move, the armor had different pieces um, but armor is what the knight wore in order to protect themselves from swords and arrows and other forms of attack. They would probably wear a helm and I did mention I think armor was very, very heavy and I think wearing a helm was very, very heavy. Um, you could use the word helmet as well. We have two words. Helm definitely refers to something very, very old. Uh, helmet would be a newer word but a helm is something that you would wear on your head in order to protect yourself just as you would wear armor to protect yourself. Most knights would use a sword 
They might use a small sword. They might use a large sword. They might have a two-handed sword where they had to use two hands to hold it because it was so heavy. But a sword was a very, very common weapon and is still a common weapon when you watch a TV show like Lord of the Rings. They will have swords. Sometimes they'll have magic swords in those TV shows. Uh, a dagger is a very short, short sword. That's the best way to describe it. It's not really, I guess you could say it's a knife but it's made more for stabbing I think. So, these are some daggers. A knight I think would quite often have a large sword but also carry a dagger just in case they drop their sword or if they needed to fight with their sword and their dagger at the same time, they would have their sword which was longer and their dagger which was a bit shorter. And then of course, they would have a shield. Often, their shield would be painted with the colors of their house or the colors of their clan or the colors of their family and they might even have a coat of arms on it. A coat of arms is like a flag for a specific family but a shield was of course used to protect as well. Because the armor wasn't perfect, it was probably a good idea to have a shield as well so that when someone was trying to attack you, you could actively block what they were doing. You could protect yourself with your shield. And then with this came up earlier in Mode Eggs' question. Uh, a weapon that was quite dangerous because you could attack from afar. There's a good use of the word afar is the is the bow and arrow. So, you would have a bow and arrow. You would pull back the drawstring on the bow and you would have an arrow and then when you release the arrow, it would fly through the air and hit people. So, the bow and arrow was a weapon where you could attack at range. It was a ranged attack weapon. So, you could attack from far away. So, much different than a sword which required you to be very, very close to someone in order to attack them. So, there's something called a lance. So, you see the long pole that these knights are holding. This is called a lance. A lance is used when knights would do jousting. So, jousting is when you get on your horse. First, you put on your armor. You get on your horse. Um, you get your lance and then at a tournament in front of a crowd, you ride towards each other and you try to unhorse the other person by hitting them with your lance. So, the lance is the long pole and jousting is when two knights ride towards each other and try to hit each other with the lance so that you fall off your horse. We've mentioned this a couple of times. There were a number of different types of weapons invented. One would be the catapult. The catapult was something that could throw something really, really heavy a very, very far distance. So, maybe they would put rocks in the catapult. Maybe they would put a barrel of boiling, a barrel of oil and light it on fire and throw it with the catapult. Um, there's something also called a trebuchet which was similar to a catapult but it used weights instead of tension. Um, I don't want to get into the details but a number of different types of siege weapons were invented. Siege weapons were weapons that could throw stuff really, really far and attack the walls of a castle. There was also something called the crossbow. The crossbow was similar to a bow and arrow but also similar to a gun. So, what it did is it took the bow part and put it sideways mounted it to a stock and it was easier to um I think you put a bolt in. I don't think you call it an arrow. You call it a bolt and then you could aim and fire the crossbow. So, you needed less strength to use a crossbow. If you used a bow, you needed to be very strong. Uh, almost anyone could fire a crossbow. There were definitely blacksmiths uh back in this era. A blacksmith was someone who worked with metal. A blacksmith is someone who could take iron and steel and perhaps other metals and make things. If you needed shoes for your horses, you went to the blacksmith. If you needed a new sword, you went to the blacksmith. A blacksmith would heat metal up. They would pound metal with a hammer and they would make things like swords, shields, helms, suits of armor, etc. And I mentioned this earlier. Sometimes there would be tournaments. Um in our modern era, we have sports 
but back in medieval times or if you watch a fantasy TV show, there will most likely be tournaments where knights get together and fight each other either for fun or actually to fight to the death. I'm not sure about what exactly the rules are at a tournament. I think though there are different rules. Sometimes we call the horse that a knight rides a steed. So, you might run into the word steed, a knight on his steed. It's just an old fashioned word for horse. Um so, you might say, oh, the knights are getting their steeds ready for battle. That would be the same as saying they're getting their horses ready for battle. And then, we have a phrase in English, a knight in shining armor. We use this to refer to usually when a guy saves a woman from a bad situation. It's not as common now because it's kind of a little bit of a sexist term but let's say Jen was driving along and she had a flat tire and she was trying to change the tire on the side of the road and I stopped and helped her. You would say that I am her knight in shining armor. I came and saved her on the side of the road. The problem is Jen's quite capable of changing her own tire so it's less common to hear this term now. And then fit for a king. When we say something is fit for a king, we mean it's very well done. It's very luxurious. It's a little bit expensive maybe. This meal is fit for a king. There's lots of yummy things to eat and strawberries and apples and it looks like lots of really fancy food. When you go out to eat with your family at an expensive restaurant, you could say, oh, this food is fit for a king. Um so, it's a way to describe something that's very very um luxurious. That's the best word for it. There are no dragons just so you know but if you are playing a video game that's set in the middle ages or during a fantasy or in a fantasy uh time, you might have dragons. If you certainly if you read the um uh Game of Thrones books or you watched that TV series, there are definitely dragons. That's not a spoiler by the way but there are definitely dragons. A dragon is a very very large mythical creature. So, we would say they're mythical because they don't really exist um but the dragon usually breathes fire. The dragon is usually good either someone either the dragon is a problem like in the hobbit where the dragon steals gold from everyone or the dragon is um I guess tame like in uh Game of Thrones where people ride the dragons but anyways, a fire breathing mythical beast I would say. And then I wanted to end with this slide because I called this lesson medieval times but there actually is a restaurant or a place you can go in Canada called medieval times. So, you can go to this place in Toronto. Uh, I have not been. I would like to go and it's called Medieval Times Dinner and Tournament. So, you can go and you can eat a meal while you watch people reenact a tournament. It's not real um but it's I think I've heard it's pretty real but it would be really cool to go. This is some place I would love to go sometime. I would love to go to Medieval Times. Um I don't know if it exists in other cities. Possibly it does. 